What is up, everybody? I am Taylor. It is July 27th, and this is the Cranky Comic Book Review Show. It's a weekly show where I go through the comic books I read, and I bitch about them. Not really. I, uh, I go from worst to best. I talk about why I love the craft and why some comics or books are god-awful. That's a more accurate description. Uh, let's get into it. It was an out a huge week for books for me because, well, a couple reasons. A, not a lot of what I liked. And B, or thought I liked or wanted to get. And B, uh, Diamond messed up and uh, half the Marvel crap didn't show up at any of the LCSs around me, so it is what it is. But I did get at least one Marvel book. And, you know, uh, this is coming the week after San Diego Comic-Con, where Marvel made a giant splash! And, uh, you know, wowed the world with a title card and one really good trailer. Uh, DC didn't do much. And uh, people are like, oh, what's DC doing? What's DC doing? They're awful. They're awful. They're awful. Now, while their movie stuff may be awful, let's see who wins the battle of uh, better comic books this week. And again, that's going to be a skewed result because <laughs> most Marvel books didn't show up. I'm also not reading most Marvel books because, spoilers, most of them are not very good. But uh, here's what we got for the week. Uh, and we're going to start with the worst, go to the best. Like I said... And I'm stretching for content. No, I'm not. But uh, worst book of the week. <laughs> Look, it's a Marvel book. Uh, I like the cover. Peach Momoko, Silk. ASM. Amazing Spider-Man for you noobs out there. Number six or number 900 if you use Marvel math and Marvel counting. Uh, this is a big boy book. It was $10. It's printed square bound with a rather shitty cover. And, uh, I mean, thickness wise. And really glossy paper. And... Uh, yeah. This is just a goofy, stupid story. And not that that's necessarily a horrible thing. Uh, and I'm opening this up because I want to see who did the coloring on it. Because I really hated the coloring. <laughs> okay. Marcio Menez, uh, Dio Dijo Lima, and Eric Arn... Ar okay, Arsene Diego. Uh, no. The coloring on this kind of bugged me. It reminded me a lot of, like, early digital coloring and not in a good way. Uh, and then the story, like I said, it's a silly, goofy story. And that's not awful all the time. Uh, it's a throwback in a lot of ways to Silver Age Spider-Man and paying homage to early issues of the story. And it references very early issues of the story. And there's villains that are from Spidey, Spidey's past, which makes sense because it is the 900th issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Again, I'm not counting. I'm not sure how accurate that actually is. Uh, it's Zeb Wells writing and John Romita Jr. on the art. I do not like John Romita on uh, Spider-Man. He's, he's way too blocky, I think, for the fluidity you need to draw a good Spider-Man and uh, that kind of stuff. This is not the, his worst issue of this. Uh, I, I just don't think he's a good fit for the title. Uh, and for the writing, Zeb Wells can write humor. Uh, I, I enjoyed his run on Hellions quite a bit because it had this balance of, like, sarcastic humor and, and silliness with the kind of deep sort of deadliness that was a nice blend in Hellions. This is not a nice blend. This is trying to be a comedy without really throwing back in a good way to the Silver Age. Uh, the Silver Age books had, were earnest and uh, had this like, it's a different era, so they were different books and they just had this pureness to them, even though they were kind of goofy in ways and the villains were kind of goofy. This does not have that. This is just kind of a silly, stupid story with really silly backup stories that are not very great either. Uh, it's okay. It's a one-and-done story. It, you don't learn anything new about uh, Spider-Man's past or anything in here, and uh, you don't learn anything new about any of the villains, really, or anything else. And it's supposed to be a lesson on who Spider-Man is, but if you haven't figured that out by 900 issues... This is not going to be the book that changes your mind on that or does any grand revelations or anything like that. It's it's harmless. It's not awful, but it's $10. It's a lot of money to spend on mediocre, and that's what this is. This is kind of mediocre. So it's another Marvel money, Marvel money grab by the biggest world conglomeration ever or some shit. I don't know. Probably second Amazon. I don't know. I'm not keeping track of who the biggest evil corporations in the world are. That's for a different show. All right, next. This one came out last week. Uh, and the story itself is not bad. Uh, this is Nightwing number 90, whatever the hell, four. Uh, Tom Taylor writes a fun Nightwing. And this is a fun issue of Nightwing. This is leaps and bounds better than Spider-Man. So we're jumping up in quality already. Uh, I, 
the problem is that I really missed Bruno Adondo's art on here. A Borges is a fill-in artist, and it's competent, but just kind of janky, and, and it doesn't really fit with what has been set up here. It, it's the, 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 yeah, and, and that's the best way I can figure it out. Like, to, when Tom Taylor and, and uh, Bruno Redondo are, are in sync, they put out an amazing comic, and, and it's a pairing that works very well on this book. But when you don't have that, you get stiff-looking characters, you get stiff panels, I'm gonna, why am I not? I, this is one of those days, people, where I'm not having great luck with the camera. I spent a half hour trying to get it to work before I could get this thing going, so it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, this is just a, you know, it's a stiffly drawn book, and that, and that, and the the characters just don't feel like they're quite drawn right for this title. It's it's all right. Uh, the story itself, not bad. You learn some things about the police chief that was set up in the previous issue, and the plot progresses, and it's kind of soap opera e, which is everything you kind of want in a in a superhero comic. You want the plot to go forward. You want some action. There's all of that. It's just being hampered by the art in this issue. Our right, next uh, soap opera. -y. Action progressing. Uh, characters moving forward. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Robin number... 16? Yeah. Uh, Robin's been a fun book. And it's still a fun book. This is my favorite book by Josh Williamson. He's in charge... Not in charge, but like the mastermind of all of DC uh, crises, crisis eyes, crisis eye books right now. And I don't love those. I don't think he's great for that. I don't think he can handle a giant crisis book very well. But what he can do is tell a fun Robin story. He's got his uh, decent mastery of who Damian Wayne, Damian Wayne is as a character. He's not just a one-note like little shithead like other writers tend to write him. He's got a bit more to him, and he's off on his own and doing his own thing and growing up uh, and trying to do the right thing and messing up a lot, which is you also want that in a hero book. And then you have the villain who's, what, Lord Deathman? I don't know, whatever, can't remember the guy's name. Kind of a goofy, stupid villain, uh, and like the ideas in here are kind of goofy and stupid in a fun way. Uh, Robin's been solid from the get-go. It, it gets hampered when it gets tied into these bigger event books, like the, the stupid Deathstroke thing a couple of issues ago, and it'll probably get tied into the, the Dark Crisis because it's another Josh Williamson thing. But when it's on its own, it's a solid title, and this is solid. This is good. I like this. Uh, Robin number sixteen. All right, next. Uh, we have a book that's generally glacially paced, takes forever to get somewhere, and uh, you know has fun action when it can, somewhat hampered by the art. It's going to be maybe today's theme, probably not, but uh, this is something that's killed the children, I think, what, 25? Yeah, 25 probably. This is uh, the B cover. I like this cover. It's die cut. It's an oversized issue. Uh, things happen. Storylines get resolved actually rather quickly in here, and we move on to the next kind of tale, and... There's, there's evil, there's violence, there's the fun things that happen. And by fun, I mean murder and death and destruction. That's when something is killing children has best. This is one of the better issues of the book that I've read lately. It's a double-sized, I paid too much for this for this book, book because uh, it's 25, uh, and it's got enough action for a single-sized normal title. But when Tynan's writing this book, he writes it glacially slowly, and it just takes forever to get somewhere. That's kind of his problem in a lot of titles. Uh, but if you're willing to overlook that, this is decent. Uh, my problem is, again, with Word of Deladera, is when he gets creative with the panels, and there's sometimes you just don't know how to read the page. When you traditionally read the comic, you go left, right, down, 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 all in one page. He'll do these spreads where it overlaps into the gutter by a bit, and that's supposed to be your clue. You have to read it all the way across. It's just not good fundamentals. It's like it's failing at some of the very basics of how you were supposed to draw a comic. Uh, he's he's fine at the figures, he's got a fluid ink style, and he's got a nice sense of action, but when you have panels like this where it just crosses over a little into the gutter, that's not great. It's just kind of a confusing way to tell a story. And he does that a lot, and it drives me nuts. Because there's it's not consistent either. If you consistently had to read across the spread, then I can understand it, then you'd learn to deal with it, but then he'll switch it up, and then that's not the case. And, ugh. Also, this shit did not need a full-page spread. This is me being cranky, and I did not hate this issue. I actually rather enjoyed it, but I can learn the basics of comic book storytelling, sir. Alright, uh, next. We have a book that everyone else, I think, has probably given up on by now, or waiting for a trade paperback, and I don't necessarily blame them. But I'm still reading it. I'm still liking it. It is still gorgeous, and it is a righteous thirst for vengeance. 
Number, what is this? What the hell number? I can't see, read it. Number 10. Number 10. This is an action-packed issue. The action has been a little bit, little bit slowed down in these previous uh, previous issues. Yeah, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. But when there is action, there's a lot of it. And this is uh, uh, this book is almost all action. Uh, there's some dramatic moments. There's some things that could have consequences as the series goes forward. This is what you want in a title. This is great. Uh Andre Lima Rahu has a great sense of storytelling. You're never confused as far as which way to read the damn thing. And he choreographs a really nice action sequence. So you're, you're reading this and you're like, oh, wow. Uh, and it does, he plays with the pacing, which you, you can do in comics. And he plays with the uh, time which and, and, and all that. And then he'll, but he doesn't tend to go wonky with the panel designs, other than like, you know, shifting them so they're not all square and stuff. Uh, but yeah, you you can follow the choreographed action very well. There are not a lot of words in this book, and it's a very quick kind of breeze through if you want it to be. But if you stop and think and study uh, uh, how uh, he's drawing this and how uh, he and uh, Rick Remender are working together to tell this tale, I think it's really great. And I love it, the coloring on it also, which is uh, Chris, ha oh, Chris O'Halloran and Russ Wooten. I am really still enjoying this book. It's violent. It's it's uh, kind of gross in a lot of ways, uh, but it is violently gorgeous, and that's enough for me on this one. So, violent thirst for righteous thirst for vengeance, number ten. Also, uh, I'm starting to get an idea of why this book is titled that. So, if you're reading this, let me know. We can talk about this uh, off screen or on camera or in a chat or something. I don't want to spoil it, but I do think I, I'm starting to get it up. A reason of why this book is titled this way and I think it's becoming clear in this issue and I if I'm right it, it could be great if I'm wrong I'll be happy to be wrong on that one too so there we go number 10 all right uh, next we have the pen ultimate which is should be the name of a superhero team the second to last superhero team uh, anyways Swamp Thing 15 of 16 uh, Ron V Sean Perkins and Spicer on the coloring uh, my not complaint, but my little bit nitpicky thing is I think the colors are a little bit too bright on this issue for a Swamp Thing title. However, that's a minor thing. Uh, Perkins' art is great, as always. It's dark, it's gritty, it really fits into the Sandman mythos, and he understands what he's drawing as far as that goes. He, he knows he knows the greatness that has come before it, <laughs> before him, in, in like Bernie Wrightson and, and uh, all those, and the original kind of creators and or fantastic artists on Swamp Thing. I don't know if this will reach to those heights as far as the art goes, but it is it is nice and gnarly and organic and rough and all that. But yeah, you can see that it just feels like it should have a little bit less brightness to the colors. Uh, Ron V has created uh, in 15 issues a great new addition to the uh, Swamp Thing mythos. There's the newer new iteration of Swamp Thing and his journey, and this is going to wrap up next issue. I think it's going to be a solid wrap-up. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there's a lot that happens in this issue that lead to that final uh, either confrontation or solution or whatever, and it's a definitely a different Swamp Thing than what has come before, but still shows great respect for what has come before. I think if this wraps up well next month or whatever it actually ends, it could be one of the more highly regarded and more special runs on Swamp Thing, and that's saying a lot. So I like Swamp Thing from the get-go, uh, when it ties into the main DC universe is when it le drops down a little bit in quality. However, it's still been a fantastic 15 issues, and this is no different. Really like this title. Really like this issue. I don't want to spoil a whole lot. But yeah, there's a new parliament of gears that was introduced in this run, and things grind. Get it? Guess gears grind? I don't know. But that doesn't. There's gears. There's parliaments. There's evil. There's good. There's resolutions. There's talking. There's fighting. All right. Uh, things that respect what came before it. In a, in a great way and add something new to the mythos. Well, maybe that's the theme of this week. Actually, it might probably a closer closer theme to this week. Uh, <laughs> and it's Tynan. But I like this one a lot better than uh, his his run on uh, his own title. So this is Same Man Universe, Nightmare Country, issue number four. James Tynan IV writing and um, Lissandro Esteran on the main art and then uh, Dan, Danny as, has an interior fill-in. This ties in directly to some of Neil Gaiman's run on Sandman and fills in some things from a character that uh, showed up in the very early in the Sandman run. You don't need to know that to enjoy what is going on in here. It does help. It, it adds more flavor and you get more context as far as what's happening. But you have these two characters, Agony and Ecstasy, who are after this woman. And uh, that's all I'm going to spoil as far as what's going on in this series. 
Uh, other than the fact that there's also the Corinthian, who's one of Sandman villains, as it were. Although there's a villain in in that universe is, it's a it's a it's a nuanced t term. Uh, I I'm really enjoying this. I, I I think it's gotten better every issue, and this is the best issue yet. Uh, first issue I thought was kind of slow, and then it's just kind of this one actually things happen. It's well paced. There's like nice kind of watercolory stuff with great coloring by Tom Tamara Bond villain, and the, the agony and ecstasy characters are gross and kind of disgusting and do gross, disgusting things. It is dark. It is gritty. Uh, it shows humanity at its worst and uh, reminds me in some ways of Red Room. Uh, this is a solid issue to, to, to Sandman Night this, and a solid addition to the Nightmare Universe. It's not Neil Gaiman, but it has, it, it you know, wears its history on its sleeve. So it does tie in. You feel like it's part of the Sandman Universe. Good stuff. All right, next. And these last two books maybe could be flopped, uh, flippity, flippity, floppity around. Yeah, I'm a master of words, people, as far as what's the favorite book of the week is, but maybe. Uh, we have Chip Zdarsky's Public Domain, issue number two. This um, is an interesting title. It's not a superhero book. I mean, it sort of is. It's about these uh, family and the whose father, the father in the family, created one of the more popular heroes ever in the universe, kind of, kind of like the Superman or Batman, or take whatever very famous superhero you want and uh, use that as the analogy. And uh, now there's like four, four billion movies made about this character, and the original character has no rights to him, and this is what is happening when that may or may not be the case anymore. And then there's a family struggle. It's mostly about the family struggle and... Uh, learning how to deal with each other as a family that's kind of distant from each other. And in that regard, I think it's really strong. I, I like the issue number one. I really like this issue. I don't know if this is better than the first issue, but I do think it's a very solid second issue of this series. It's I think it's a chip just ruminating on the nature of the business and the uh, nature of, well, creator's rights, for one thing, obviously, and then just the nature of like the toll that creating something can take on uh, those around you. And it's an interesting thing. Um, I really like Public Domain. It, it, it also has this thing that I have not seen a lot in a whole lot of modern day stuff. And it, it I, I don't know if it's just because Chip's not really counting the pages too well or what, because it doesn't do it on the back cover, inside cover. But like I think he just, he's like, well, I'm just going to have enough pages to tell the story I want. So he starts on the inside cover. And he did that on the first issue as well. But then on the back cover, he doesn't do that. There's an ad for another one of his books, Newburn, which is also really great. But yeah, Chip's doing all the heavy lifting on this one. He's doing the... Writing and the art. I don't think he's doing the lettering, uh, but I couldn't tell you who he is because I, I'm not going to flip through it. So, Public Domain's been another surprise hit. Hit in my mind, anyways. I don't know if it's a hit with the general public. I tend to have different tastes than some of the general public, so it is what it is. But yeah, Public Domain, I, I recommend picking it up. You can probably still hunt down issue number one. It's not one of those highly lauded spec books, and it probably won't be. Like, there's nothing in here that's probably going to turn into a major motion picture coming soon. But solid read. All right, next. Uh, and this is my favorite book of the week. And, uh, yeah, another $10 book. And I was debating whether or not I was going to get this one. And I, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. I, but I'm glad I did. This is Superman Space Age, written by Mark Russell, who's known. He's written other things like One Star Squadron and uh, Not All Robots. And I can't remember what else. But he tends to have this, like, satirical kind of bitterness and, and like, sarcasm to his writing. Uh, which I generally love, and uh, there's some of that in here, but it's it's really not that. Uh, and Mike Allred on the art with Laura Allred doing the coloring, I love Mike and Laura's uh, art. Uh, Mad Men uh, is still one of my favorite characters uh, from Dark Horse. Well, not Dark Horse technically, but anyways, yeah, Mike Mike and Laura Allred's Mad Men uh, with Laura on the coloring and Mike on the on the drawing. Uh, he's got this like sense that just sort of fits that all a any superman title but this one especially the majority of this book takes place in the 60s and it's it's like an elseworld story or a, you know whatever the hell dc calls their shit that's not continuity anymore i can never keep track black label uh, call whatever the hell you want but it's a it's a what if uh you know what if uh superman was born in the 60s and uh things were a little bit different it, it's it's a much more solid story than i actually expected out of a superman book and it and, and it's an interesting retelling of Superman's origin, which I didn't know it would be possible to retell Superman's origin for the nine billionth time and make it interesting. But this really is. Um, 
there's the it's it's set in the sixties where there's the nuclear arms race, there's the death of Kennedy, uh, and it shifts things into that time frame in a very effective way. You have Lex Luthor, you have Pariah from uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earth comics, and that uh, does play a key here, and I think it'll probably play a greater factor in the next issues of this. And this is another beefy ten dollar book, but you get a lot of art in here, you get a lot of pages, and I think this one's a lot more worth it than the the ASM garbage. Uh, and yeah, if you like Mike Allred's like art and you really like Superman, especially the sort of the alt Superman stuff, um, I don't know if this is going to be quite as high falutin or reach reach the higher levels as say like uh, All Star Superman did, because uh, that's one of my favorite Superman stories of all time. Uh, but this is a very good start to this, and it it it, it does sort of do a nice job of explaining why Superman had, did and did not help certain things and. It's it shows a different take on a on a new young Superman starting out, uh, and it, it it's it, it it's a fairly fresh take. I, I I enjoyed this quite a bit. Also, as far as the sarcasm and the bitterness, uh, where it does come into play, it's I don't think Mark Russell has a lot of faith in humanity, and I don't know if he's wrong, but there's a lot of uh, things to having to do with war and people and uh, how people react to war and what causes war and war. What is it good for? in here. Uh, so your mileage may vary, but this is my favorite book of the week. Uh, but yeah, honestly, a pretty good week for comics, uh, for a fairly light week for me. Nine books. Uh, these are my top five. And and if you've followed me before, not, a lot of this probably won't be a surprise for you. If you have Righteous Search for Vengeance, we've got Swamp Thing, we've got Nightmare Country, we've got Public Domain, and we got uh, Superman Space Age, number one. So, a lot more DC than Marvel, even though, you know, whatever, only one Marvel book. Uh, I do write articles every week on my Substack, which is taylorwinder.substack.com. That's down below. It's a free kind of newsletter, so you want to sign up for it. I, I will have an article out about these five books where I'll go into a little bit different things as far as why, like, why I like them and stuff. Because I'll have a, a, I take like a day to ruminate, to reflect, to, uh, you know think as it were and then I put down those thoughts on the paper and I'll actually kind of edit and revise a little before I release it out to the general public so it's a little it tends to be a little more cohesive than this um, not as not a ton I mean it's usually a pretty quick read for folks but if you were interested in reading something I wrote please sign up uh, I'd like I'd love to have you uh, yeah and that's that's what that'll do for me this week, people. Uh, don't be a dick, even if you've been fighting with your fucking camera all uh, afternoon. And uh, Marvel can't make a good book to save their life. So, I'll see ya.